<laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up. This, this stair, though. How tanky is Lance Master? She's pretty tanky. All right, so if I give you a slight explanation in the intro, you guys like the Zero to Giga Chat series because I built it from scratch, right? And the problem is I don't have any more characters that are fresh in order for me to build it from scratch. So uh, we're going to try to do a different take. Maybe I might not even ma name it Zero to Giga Chat. My name is something else, but I will try to build it from scratch, like simulating, like building it from scratch as if you guys are actually receive the character and if you're wondering what to build and what to focus on for Lance Master, I think it could help a little bit because you guys are technically getting the character fresh and if relic accessories come out or if you try to utilize the legendary accessories to get what you want. So let me try to explain a couple of things. First of all, Lance Master, what's the first step? You have to check your identity and you have to check what skills you're going to use. And you also have to check what kind of tripods provide this character uh, the benefits without spending any gold, which is when you say gold, this gold is equivalent equal to your engraving books, your accessories and your stones. That's what gold is. So without spending any gold, you can get whatever you want within the skills. For example, these two skills are the most important skill for the red skill. Why? Because the second tripod, it decreases the area of effectiveness by 50%, but it's a guaranteed crit. And you think to yourself, wait a minute, I can guarantee crit, that's pretty good, correct? But at the same time, this other tripod says it increases crit damage by 100%. <clears throat> what if this is level five? Uh, this could be like 160%. So considering uh, looking through the tripods is the most important thing. For example, this particular skill as well is also 100% crit because it says it will increase your crit rate by 100% on this skill and do more damage, 44% more damage. And this is 100% crit at level one, right? So this skill and this skill is 100% crit. You have this other skill. This is one of your main blue skill. If you look at the tripod at the very end, it says you have 25% additional crit rate on this skill alone. So you question yourself after looking at this, Lance Master has built-in crit chance, right? She has guaranteed crit chance on the red skill. She has a crit synergy. Also, she has a skill that gives you bonus crit chance on the skill alone. Therefore, most of the time, you ask yourself, do I want to play the changing build, the swapping build, or do you want to play the blue build alone? Now you ask yourself that first, because what the blue one does is you can't use the red stance, but 36% increase in damage on all blue skills. So you'll be spamming blue skills. But if you use the red one, you can swap stances and the stances that you swap, you get bonus attributes. So if I get it to level three, like this, I have 15% attack speed, 15% damage and 25% crit rate. So if I explain it to you, if I switch from red to blue and use this skill with the 25% crit chance, right? You have 50% straight up without anything, without any stats or, or any crit related attributes. You have 50% crit rate straight up. So this is important. So step one, you have to go to Trixian and test out which build would you like to do because they're because they're very different. The blue skill in general is you take this skill. This is the most important skill. And then you have your second one, this one that increases 25%. You have two, you have a couple of choices to which skill you want to use. Cause some people use this, some people use this skill cause it's a little different. It's like, it's pretty good. Cause it increases uh, more orb gain, has cooldown. Blue skill itself is, uh, have a lot of freedom to it. The reason why I chose mine as it is, is because this particular so is quick and easy. And this skill is also quick and easy. So what I do is I use my D skill to do my conviction. And then I use my S skill for judgment. Then you have the conviction and judgment activated to have shorter cooldown on my red skill. So I can have a shorter cooldown for my red skills. So you have that combination there. It is important for you to find your own combination first. So um, since we're talking about the Lance Master, the red, blue, red build, we can probably talk about the red build first, uh, the switching build. So if you swap, it's 25% crit increase and 15% attack speed and then 15% damage, right? If you swap it from blue to red, you get 15% movement speed, 
20% damage and 50% crit damage. So you think to yourself, the engraving that is very efficient to Lance Master is Keen Blunt. Why? Because she has 100% crit rate on red skills and she has a default 50% crit rate on one of her skills. But it requires a lot of uh, research into all these things because technically, oh, then what if you switch to red, right? If you switch to red, I have 100% crit rate, but I have 50% crit damage. So it's not very efficient if you add it to crit damage because what happens is crit damage is additive. But besides that point, since your crit rate is 100%, why not increase the crit damage with the Keen Blunt, right? So asking that, since the class buff is so good to a point that you would need it as level 3. So the actual thinking process of building your Lance Master should be, this is your primary objective. Level 3, Climax. It's, called Cli it's probably called Climax or, or Zenith. Is it Zenith or Climax? Anyways. Level 3 is a start, and then you can add something like what is, what is something that is very good and that doesn't have that much of a penalty? And it's I think it's Keen Blunt. And what's another engraving that just gives you damage? So there are a lot of grudge... Uh, there are a lot of grudge haters because if you think about it, you're scared of grudge because you're going to get hit a lot and then you would it would increase your chance to like your death, right? And at the same time, grudge tends to be more expensive in NA or EU. If you think about grudge, right, it increases 20% damage without any conditional attributes. For example, what requires conditional? What's a conditional related engraving? As I explained on some of my videos, right? Conditional is... Supercharge is something like you increase 20% on charging skills only, so it doesn't impact on all of your skills. Something like Raid Captain, you need more movement speed. Something like Ambush Master, it requires you to hit back attacks. People need to realize that if you don't land your back attacks while having Ambush Master, you do 0% additional damage. So out of the 10 times you hit, if you hit none of the uh, attacks as back attack, you do 0% increased damage. People actually don't know this for some reason. Because sometimes they think the back attack skills just get like a gen generic increase in damage. But people need to realize Ambush Master is only efficient when you can do back attacks. Same case for Master of Brawl, right? Yeah, I think this is called Master of Brawl. Master of Brawl, 25% when you hit on head attacks only. Hitmaster is a little bit different. The reason why Hitmaster is a little bit different, it increases damage on skills that are not head attack and not back attacks. For example, this doesn't apply to Lance Masters because if you highlight some of the skills, it says back attack skill. So it doesn't apply to Lance Masters at all. Considering all those things, uh, think about the options. Think about the options that you could do. So you have Grudge, you have Cursed Doll, right? You have Keen Blunt, you have Raid Captain, you have Adrenaline, and you also have a lot attack, right? You also have something like stabilized status. And you also have barricade. You also have increased mass. There's a lot of choices, but there's not that many if you think about it. There aren't really that many engravings that you could use. Therefore, when most of the Korean builds are having grudge, the only reason is because there are no other options other than having grudge. So it is, to me, since you guys are going to tier 3, you guys are getting ready for Valton, etc. I think it is wise to get used to grudge. Uh, get used to the penalty because you will have to use it anyway to pass DPS checks in the future. So this is when the game actually becomes a little bit harder because grudge tend to be grudge tend to be hurt. It, it, it hurts if you wear grudge, and if you wear grudge and curse thought at the same time, you use a lot more potions too. So when you say what is the best three 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 for Lance Master, I think it's this because it gives you twenty percent, and since Lance Master has a fifty percent crit rate. And a uh, hundred percent crit rate and fifty percent crit damage, and at the same time, the blue skill also has fifty percent crit damage at the same time with a high chance on crit. You go keen blunt, and then you go for the level three class engraving. However, how would the stats will be though? So if you notice, the stats I did was spec and swiftness, right? Why do you think this is the case? If you think about it, you don't really need to go crit. Why would you not need to go crit? You have 25% crit rate from swapping to blue. And this skill does 25% crit on top of that. And I have 18% on top of this. That's already 68% crit rate, which is uh, already efficient for Keen Blunt. But there are separate builds too. 
you can actually go crit spec and take a different red skill. For example, there's a different red skill where you can remove this into uh, something else because it says it increases more damage on the perfect zone. So you can choose the damage and get the crit somewhere else. You can do that. That's why uh, Lance Masters are pretty complicated. It's a complicated class because should I take crit somewhere else? Where should I take the crit? Where should I use King Blunt at all? You can actually do that. For example, this particular skill, this says it's 100% crit rate and increasing crit damage, but this particular tripod attacks twice. So if you look at here, you, you see that? You see there's a second hit? This is a different, tar this is a different tripod. But it's not 100% crit. It depends what tripod you take, and it depends what tri uh, play styles you're taking. You need to adjust your engravings and play style based on that. So what spec does is it increases your bar. It increases your bar. So here, if I do 1800 spec, it fails about half, and it fails about another half, right? But if I have, and I have the wealth rune as well. But in a comparison, if I have zero spec or one spec, what happens is if I swap, hold on, okay. If I swap, if I hit him once, this is how much it fills up if you have zero spec. Well, it's a, it's little, right? It's almost double the time. It's almost double the difference. So if you have spec also, what happens is the buff that you guys get from the swapping buff, right? The efficiency increases. The buff efficiency increases by 131.33%. This means even though the even though the UI says crit increases by 25%, it should increase more than 25%. Okay, so this is zero, right? I swap, it's 53, <clears throat> it's 57.83. It's not 25. It's more than 25. What does this mean? This means some of you guys are confused about engra engraving sometimes. Is 333 better or 3333 better? And people think that 3333 is insanely better than the 33s. I always tell you differently, guys. If you have a 333 with a solid combat stats, that is better than 4-3s with a shitty combat stat. Especially for Lance Master. Especially. Because you won't be able to cycle your skills if you don't have enough spec. So this is important for you. So what do we cover? So if I summarize, what do we cover? First, look into your skills and decide what skills you're going to use. Most of the time, the if you're, cho if you're choosing the swap build, you choose these two red skills because these two red skills do the most damage and it, it, and it gains the most and it's 100% crit rate with the right tripod. And the blue skills, you base it off of the most important one, the, your synergy skill that gives you 18% crit rate, plus your, um, this is the F skill, plus this skill that gives 25% more crit rate uh, when you actually use it with this tripod. This means you have 100%, almost 100% crit rate with a proper spec, right? So what would you add from here? What, what, which engraving would you add from here? I would add Cursed All because it's a flat 16% increase. So this would be a very good build. However, if you're scared of Cursed All, because Cursed All makes you use a lot more potions, you can use something like Increased Mass. So why do you think Increased Mass is okay? So Increased Mass gives you minus 10% attack speed, but it increases your attack power by 18%. So it gives you 2% more than Cursed All. However, it decreases your 10% uh, in attack speed, but... As you may know, if you swap, this one gives you movement speed. And if you swap it back, it gives you 15% attack speed. So your blue skills is the one that matters on your attack, uh, attack speed. Because you're kind of like doing it in a combo, right? This one, you just cast it once. So another thing that we should know is you notice the attack speed is 113%, correct? The red skill... If you swap it over, it's 90%. So if I, so the thing that you guys should watch out is if your attack speed is under 100%, the penalty is more harsh than going from 110% to 100%. So you never want to go increase mass if your average attack speed decreases from 100%. Oh, then should I not use increase mass? That's not the case. So check this out. This is why you go spec swiftness though. So if you go spec swiftness, you have 98.71, uh, 5.7.
Also, when you guys play with supports, when relic sets come out, the, you add another 10% on top of this. So you are fine. Like you're in a good spot. So you can use increased mass. Lance Master is one of the classes that can use increased mass. Therefore, you have two you have two options. You have Grudge, Keen Blunt, Class Engraving, and Increased Mass. Or this increased mass can be Cursed Doll. The reason why I would go Cursed Doll is because I have Legendary Cursed Doll. So this is also why, in the end, I have the Cursed Doll because I have the Legendary Cursed Doll. But I just wanted to keep the Cursed Doll. I, this could be increased mass. And the reason why I have these two engravings is because these are extra, by the way. Is Ray Captain also viable? Good question. So let's talk about Ray Captain for a second. If you swap, you have 140% movement speed at red. If you swap back, you have 109% movement speed. So it is not as efficient because your blue skill does damage too. This is how you calculate it. The reason why you get 140% movement speed is because this skill, this your, your engraving gives you 15% movement, uh, increase in 15% movement speed. However, since you have high spec, the efficiency goes by 118%. So it gives you more than that. It gives you more than 15%. So let's quickly cover it. So let's say you let's say you guys want. There you go. Let's say you guys want this build. Right? Let's say you guys want this build. And you don't and then your goal is spec and swiftness. That means you open up the thing and write it down. Right? You have the class one. And then you have Keen Blunt, and you have Increased Mass, and then you have Grudge. This is what you do. First of all, check what books you have. Let's say you have a 9 class book, and then let's say you have a Grudge book. So you have an option. You have a either Keen Blunt book, Increased Mass book, or Grudge book. The better way to decide which books you should use is you should, you should search which accessories are the most expensive. And most of the time, Grudge is the most expensive ex accessories in the market. So you utilize a grudge book. So let's say you have a 9-9 like this. Now, which stone are you going to carve? You can actually carve keen, blunt, grudge stone. That's pretty expensive because increased mass accessories are pretty cheap. So imagine you have a 6-6 stone like this. So you have to read the two class engraving like that. And then you can cover it off increased mass as much as you can. Something like that. That works. But, you, but what's more important is to go back and forth and see what you need. So you need to, you need to have the two class engravings because uh, if you beat Argos, you can have the legendary accessories, right? So you can do it that way. And let's say it's 6-6 six, King six, Blunt, right? If you just have the three here. But you're missing about five, you're missing 15 here. So maybe you can, ha you can read Increased Mass and King Blunt, King Blunt Stone. And then you can cover it up like this. This is why getting four threes is really hard with just legendary accessories. You won't be able to if you have nine nine, but you kind of get the point, right? So it is important for you to move around all the numbers like that. This works. Three, 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 three. If you have the six, six stone, right? So what's important is one, figure out what books you have. Two, figure out what stone you can carve. Three, buy accessories more expensive they are, buy it from the rings, and then earring, and then figure out the necklace, the cheapest engraving. So the engraving should be uh, something that has to do with increased mass. And if you question yourself, wait, I think this is too expensive. This is why you remove one. You remove increased mass. If you remove increased mass, you have a whole lot thing to work with now. So you have 3-3 three, three like this. Let's say you have a 6-6 six, six stone or 6-5 six, stone, something like that. Like a 5 6 on Grudge Keen Blunt Stone. You can have like just an accessory on Keen Blunt only. It'll be much cheaper. Just like that. But can I increase a little more? You can get Adrenaline here. Because Adrenaline level 1 is a very good engraving. So you can have something like a 3-3 three, three like that. Or you can also go Ether Predator. If you think Keen Blunt and Grudge Stone is too expensive... There are no really, there are no other choices. That's the thing. That's the problem. If you have three engravings, you have the class engraving. There's no class engraving stone. So the, another choice that you could do, you can do keen blunt, not keen blunt grudge stone. You can also just carve a keen blunt stone and then 
and and carve anything else. Maybe what if it's Ether Predator? And then if you carve like a six six stone like this, you have a level one Ether Predator, right? And then you have Keen Blunt Stone, and then you can work on an accessory like this, right? Just like that. Then you have a three 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 one. Even heavy armor too, heavy armor, right? Anything. This applies to almost every single class. The reason why I'm keep stressing out that you need to write this down, you need to theory craft, because this will save you money. And you guys see me exactly how I built it. The reason why I can't build it now, because I already built this character. But have you, when you guys seen the other series, the uh, uh, Zero Two Giga Chat series, right? I write it down. I see. Okay, so I'm gonna get this and this and this. How can I get this the cheapest? How can I get that the cheapest? And when you go for three, 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 one, these are the things that you could do. How could I? How could I save more money? Like, why is this more expensive? You gotta find, like, you gotta like maneuver yourself, find a different way. And most of the time, use the book on the most in expensive engraving. That's smarter. And use the stone for the second most expensive engraving. And then you have the accessories to work around with to save the money. And by waiting. And also what's important is if you write this down, if you have write this down, you can wait for an accessory. So let's say I am going to wait for, obviously the class engraving and King Blunt is going to be expensive, right? So I'm going to take that off. I'm just going to have the class engraving and then I'm going to wait for King Blunt grudge accessories. Or I'm going to wait for, heavy. let's say you're going for increased mass. I'm gonna wait for increased mass grudge accessories. I'm not gonna let's say I'm not gonna take King Blunt at all. Let's say let's say this is your three engravings. Class one, grudge, and increased mass. Let's say if this is your if this is your engraving, you can do it this way too. Right? You just look at the auction house, grudge, increased mass. There will always be someone who rage sell. There will always be someone who will rage sell if their accessories don't sell. You, you snatch that quickly. And then you cover this up. You lock it up. And then you base, and then you move other numbers around. How can I get this done? By, by, uh, how can I get the other accessories done? You stay on the auction house again. So what's important is you put your access, uh, you put your engravings based on what you want, right? If, and if you think Keen Blonde is too expensive, just look for other options because if you think about it, Keen Blunt is efficient. It's super efficient for uh, Lance Master, but it is still 16 to 18% efficiency. Same thing for 16, this is 18%, but the grudge is only 20. Grudge is the only engraving that just gives you flat 20% increase. That's why most people go for it. You don't have to think as much because if I want 20% efficiency on Keen Blunt, you will need like 80, 90% crit rate, which Lance Master do have. So you have an option to go Keen Blunt and not go Grudge at all. You can go Keen Blunt too. But the thought process is the more important instead of thinking which one's better. Your BIS is using the least amount of money and have the about the same percentage because the controls will cover that, cover that 1% or 2% up by other players. It really depends on the auction house, it depends on the market, and it, does, it depends on everything. So instead, I have never taught you guys to use this particular engraving or use that engraving. You have to search and you have to, you have to determine that which engraving works for you. And you find it and then you buy the right ones. And most of the time, you have to start with the stone after, after determining which engraving you want. And then carve it as it is and then do it. And at the same time, when you're done with it, you have to work on your tripods. You have to work on your tripods. My tripods are pretty weak here. Because I didn't really work on them. So since these two are your main DPS skills, you will need the cooldown and you will need the damage. You will need the damage, cooldown, all that stuff. So this is already five tripods here. One, two, three, four, five, right? But maybe I don't want the cooldown tripod because I have swiftness. So if I take off the cooldown, it will be one, two, three. And then you, you kind of go into... The other ones. Oh, so the synergy skill, the faster it is, the better, right? So maybe you can have the cooldown tripod for this. So runes, you have the wealthness rune on the red skills. Why do you think that? You need to fill up your bar to swap it back for your extra crit rate, right? So most of the time, two red skills should fill up all your bar like this. And swap. 
and then have that extra crit chance, more crit chance, 18%, and then you proceed to use your yellow sk uh, blue skills. And then you fill up your bar again, and then you swap. So Wealth Rune is pretty important on the red skills. Think of it this way. Oh, it's like, oh, should I not play Lance Master because if I land two of these skills, the bar doesn't fill up. No, that's actually the case too. You have other skills. You have a lot more skills, right? You have your W skill, right? Look how much it fills up. You have your Q skill. You have your S skill as well. So if it doesn't fill up, you have a you have like more you have a more safe point to fill everything up. You don't have to feel uh, bad about it because even if they're at level one, their sole purpose is to fill up rest of your uh, rest of your bar. If you can't fill it up at two, it's the efficiency kind of drops, but like it's not as bad as you think. And for your blue skills, you have your conviction judgment rune. So some people don't use conviction and judgment rune on a lance master. Uh, same case for you put Galewind or Galewind Rune on most of the other blue skills because, you know, it needs to attack faster, right? Because she's just standing still doing her skill, right? Like this, right? Uh, here's a rule of thumb for Gale, uh, Conviction and Judgment Rune. If you add a Conviction and Judgment Rune on a skill that hits you once, like this, just one hit, you have, you have a 40% chance to activate the Conviction Rune. If you add it on a multi-hit skill, which is my D skill, you have a higher chance to activate your Conviction Rune. And then my S skill is also multi-hit. So there's no reason for you to not use a Conviction Judgment Rune. And what Conviction Judgment Rune does, to explain quickly, if I have a Conviction here, you see it's two seconds. And within two seconds, I will need to use my Judgment skill to activate the Judgment buff. So check this out. I have to conviction two seconds, right? And I turn into judgment. If this is judgment for five seconds, I heal 100% more on mana, and I have a 15% cooldown on top of what I have. This is nerfed, by the way, but it is still okay because it, it, it recovers most of your mana really fast, and you have a faster cooldown on all of your skills you, you use afterwards, by the way. The skills that are already on cooldown is not impacted, okay? So let's say I activate my Conviction Judgment Rune, I swap and use my two red skills. Instead of 14 seconds, it will be like 13 or 12. It used to be OP, now it's, now it's going to be changed, okay? So it's going to be like 13 instead or something like that. So those are the runes that uh, you could use as a Conviction Judgment Rune. And you would use Galewind most of the time. Okay, so that covers it. And as for cards, you actually don't need Lost Wind Cliff for Lance Master, and why? Because she already does 100% crit rate. So you can actually go for other things. Like, you can actually, you have a lot of freedom in cards for Lance Master. Realistic one, you can have these for like extra, extra defense. Because if you think about it, if you have extra defense, what does that mean? You can use Grudge with a less, uh, less penalty. And so some of uh, the other ones you don't really need to go for uh, Lost Wind Cliff because Lost Wind Cliff gives you 7% crit rate. But why would you need 7% crit rate when you're already at 100%? So she's one of those classes that really doesn't care about what uh, what cards they go. Okay, so um, yeah, so this this is about it though. I'm I'm finished actually. Uh, so it's not like a it's not like the usual zero to Giga Chat series where I actually have to build from scratch. So I just felt I just thought the thought process and like how actually just share the thoughts of like how I would actually build it right, like the engravings that you should aim for. And all those things. I think that's good enough because, like, I don't need to talk about the fifth engraving, etc. Because, like, if you go for the, the 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 good engravings, you just add on top of it. So I think this covers most of it.